The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Oil, present Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Name a cake and win a brand new Ford Victoria every year for five years. That's the exciting news about Kraft Oil's big contest. The recipe for the cake comes free when you buy a green cap bottle of Kraft Oil. And the award for the prize-winning name is a new Ford car every year for five years. 1,850 other prizes are Dormeyer Electric Appliances. Complete details in a few minutes. Well, since school began, the great Gildersleeve hasn't seen much of his nephew, Leroy. At dinner, the boy is busy eating. After dinner, he's busy with homework. So this morning, as our water commissioner drives his nephew to school, he makes the most of this opportunity to engage Leroy in lively conversation. Well, my boy, I know you're happy to be back in school. That's okay. New season, new faces, new teachers, new students. Must be very stimulating. It's okay. How do you like your new teachers? Okay. Do you have a good football team? Okay. Lero, you're not contributing much to the conversation. Say something besides okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What's the matter with you? I'm mad. Oh? Don't be surprised if I come home with a black eye. Leroy, I don't want you fighting. I'd better pick you up after school. Well, I won't need a ride home. I'm either chasing him home or he's chasing me. Who are you having trouble with? Curly Miller. Curly? I'll hit him so hard I'll straighten out his hair. Uh, Leroy, what happened between you and Curly? Well, he started it. He called me a name. Hey, what did he call you? Just because you're a water commissioner, he called me a drip. Oops. <laughs> and then I called him a goon. And he called me an egghead, and I said he was a big, fat pickle puss. And he said, oh, yeah, and I said, oh, yeah. And he stuck his nose right in my face and said, oh, yeah, and right back. Yeah, right all right, back. all right. That'll do, young man. And that's no way to treat your little friend. He's no friend of mine. Well, perhaps he would be if you'd stop this name calling. Well... My boy, the way to get along in life is to have a good word for everybody. The way I do. <laughs> well, I try to. You can always find something nice to say about everybody. Not Curly Miller, that egg-headed pickle puss. Leroy, stop talking about Curly Egghead. Yeah, I mean Miller. If you're going to say something about him, say something complimentary. There are not many people I don't care for, but I go out of my way to be nice to them. It pays off. Hey, I'll get off right here, Uncle. Yeah, all right. There, there's Mrs. Pettibone, the old biddy. Unc! What? What you said. Well, Mrs. Pettibone's different. Well, you don't say nice things about her. Why should I be nice to Curly? Well, Mrs. Pettibone and I have had our differences in the past, but maybe I haven't gone as far as I should to be agreeable. You tell me what to do, but it's not easy to do it yourself, is it, Unc? Yes, it is. By George, let me out of the car. Mrs. Pettibone! i got to see this. Well, I want you to. Come along. Good morning, Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, Mrs. Pettibone? Why is she walking faster, Uncle? Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, oh, it's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, indeed. And Leroy. Hi. Well, I'm surprised to see you on the school grounds, Mr. Gildersleeve. Or are you determined to finish your formal education? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I got out of the car just to speak to you. Oh, well, I'm in a dreadful hurry. I want to see the principal about a, um, a school board matter. I'm the chairman of the board, you know. Oh, I assume that. I can't think of anyone more capable. Get him. <laughs> Thank you. Well, good day. In fact, when it comes to civic activities, we know you'll always be right there at the top of the heap. Uh, well, I, I only do my duty. Well, I don't know how you find time to be so charming and so gracious and look so beautiful. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, oh brother. 
Oh, really? Really, I mean it. You look every bit as young as a schoolgirl yourself. A schoolgirl? Really? Well, perhaps a senior. What an operator. Oh. <laughs> now, Mr. Gildersleeve, careful or you'll be bordering on flattery. Oh, not at all. Well, I won't keep you. No, you're busy. But I couldn't resist chatting. It's always a pleasure and an inspiration. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've enjoyed talking to you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thank you, Mrs. Pettibone. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Oh, what a beautiful well, Leroy, what do you think of that? I think you should wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> I wonder how Leroy got along in school this morning. I George flattering Mrs. Pettibone work like a charm. Yeah, I must have used pretty good bird seed to get a song out of that old bitty. Yeah, I think I'll stop in Peavy's. Haven't had lunch at his counter in quite a while. Hello, Peavy. Hello, yeah, Mr. Jonesley. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Yeah, I thought I'd have lunch with you, Peavy. I haven't eaten here in about a month. No, you haven't. You have that same blue plate special? No, I sold that one two weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> well, uh... I'll be glad you picked up another one, if you don't mind having the blue plate lunch on a white plate. Well, that's all right, Petey. I broke the last blue plate. Why don't you serve on paper plates? They don't stand up when you wash them. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, by the way, Mrs. Pettibone was in the pharmacy this morning. Oh? I saw her at school when I took Leroy. You must have made quite an impression, Mr. Gildersleeve. What do you mean, Petey? She had some nice things to say about you. Well, is that surprising? Yes, it is. When she came in raving about you, I thought her dizzy spells were coming back. No, Phoebe. She said she was thinking of recommending you to fill the vacancy on the school board. Me? Say, hey, that would be quite an honor. Mm, she asked me what I thought. What'd you tell her? I didn't tell her what I thought. <laughs> I told her to put you on. Peavy. I'm <laughs> just having a little fun, Mr. Gildersleeve. I know you have the best interests of the school at heart. You bet. Now I'll have to let the little family know about this. So, she wants me on the school board. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, I'll get some rolls. You go right ahead, Peavy. Right, George, a fellow can get about anything he wants if he spreads it on thick enough. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet I could even get a free lunch out of Peavy. Mm, here we are. Blue plate on white plate. Oh, that looks wonderful. Yeah? <laughs> yes, indeed. I've always considered Bertie a good cook. But you've outdone her with this blue plate. You don't say. It's attractively served. Mmm, ah. tastes like food mother used to make. This turkey wing is delicious, Petey. How do you prepare it? I buy it at the corner delicatessen. <laughs> Well, I, I know you make your own potato salad. Nothing like it. How about another helping? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, you remind me of a man who was in here the other day talking about how good my food was. He asked for two helpings of everything. Yeah? Connoisseur of foods like me? No, he was broke. Phoebe, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to get something for nothing. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Why did the new principal have to come along right when I was calling Curly a pickle puss? Well, she's kind of young. Maybe I can get out of it if I work that flattery stuff on her like Unc did Mrs. Pettibone. Well, here goes nothing. Come in. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, it's you, Leroy. Uh, yes, ma'am. Did you wish to see me, Miss Henshaw? Yes. Sit down. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I assume you know why you were called in. Well, about the pickle push. I didn't mean you. I'm aware of that. Now, about you and the Miller boy. Uh, yes, ma'am, but before we talk about that, may I tell you how glad we students are to have you as our principal this year? Oh? I 
can't think of anyone more capable. Oh. Easy to see why you're at the top of the heap. Really? I don't know how you find time to be so charming and gracious. Well. And look so beautiful. You look as young as a schoolgirl yourself. Go on. Well, that's all I have to say. <laughs> that's quite a lot. Leroy, you must have gotten this from someone else. How'd you know? Did uh, someone tell you to say these nice things to me? No. He said I should say them to everybody. <laughs> Leroy, who gives you such advice? My uncle. Uh-huh. He says it pays off. It doesn't, huh? <laughs> well, a kind word is always appreciated, but outright flattery is another thing. Well, I guess you're sharper than Mrs. Pettibone. Mrs. Pettibone? Yeah, she didn't see through Aunt this morning. She fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> I see. Uh, Mrs. Pettibone told me this morning she was recommending your uncle for the school board. She did? How well does she know, Mr. Gildersleeve? Not so good. Well, Aunt paid her phony compliments this morning. She ate it up. Uh, Leroy, I think I should have a talk with your uncle. Am I in that much trouble? Somebody's in trouble. Yeah, this is the first time the principal ever sent for me. Leroy must have paid no attention to my advice. Yeah, well, I'll smooth things out. If I'm going to be on the school board, it won't hurt to turn him the charm for the new principal. You'll probably catch her in her office about that. That must be Mr. Gildersleeve coming up the walk. He isn't a bad-looking man. A little overgrown, perhaps. <laughs> I can't believe he'd be so obvious in trying to impress people. Leroy must be mistaken. Boys exaggerate so. Miss Henshaw? Yes. Yeah, I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, Leroy's uncle. Oh, yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. And city water commissioner. Yes, I know. You want to see me, I believe. I hope I didn't get you away from something important at the water department. Well, nothing's going to happen while I'm away from the office that I won't know about. I have pipelines all over town. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't keep you but a minute, Commissioner. No, yeah, that's all right. As a matter of fact, I may soon be spending quite a lot of time around the school. <laughs> Some influential friends are backing me for the vacancy on the school board, you know. I've heard about that. Oh? Gotten around town already? Congratulations. Now, Commissioner, I'd like to talk to you about Leroy. Uh, Leroy? I was just trying to set my nephew right this morning. He has the wrong slant on getting along with people. I agree. In all my years working with students, I don't believe that I have ever no, seen... No, Miss Henshaw. You couldn't have spent many years working with students. You look like a schoolgirl yourself. Oh? You had a course that wouldn't take you long to go far. Really? You have a head on your shoulders. That's why you're at the top of the heap. I didn't know anybody could heap it so high. <laughs> if I may say so, Miss Henshaw, with your problems and duties here in school, I don't know how you find the time to be so charming and gracious. Oh. And look so beautiful. Go on, Commissioner. Go on. I can't wait to tell Mrs. Pettibone the nice things you're saying to me. You, why should you tell Mrs. Pettibone? Uh, because they're the same nice things you said to her. She told you? Mr. Gildersleeve, you may think you're batting a thousand, but you hit into a triple play. A triple play? From Mrs. Pettibone to Leroy to me. Gee, I guess I'm out. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Never before has there been a contest like the new Kraft Oil Contest. First prize is a new Ford Victoria every year for five years. Not only that, there are 1,850 other prizes, 1,850 valuable Dormeyer electric appliances. You can enter. You may win. Just name a luscious new cake made with Kraft Oil. 
When you buy a green-capped bottle of Kraft Oil, you get the recipe free of extra cost. It's printed on the inside of the label. Bake the cake, enjoy it, and send Kraft the name you think best describes how good it is. First prize is a smart new Ford every year for five years. You get a deluxe Ford Victoria the first year and then trade it in on the newest model every year for the next four years at no further cost to you. Additional prizes include 100 Dormeyer electric broiler rotisseries, 200 Dormeyer electric blankets, 200 Dormeyer power mixers, 250 Dormeyer portable mixers, and 1,100 Dormeyer fry wells. You'll find entry blanks for Kraft Oil's Name the Cake contest at your grocer's where you buy Kraft Oil. The entry blank includes the full prize list, news about a special bonus prize, and complete contest rules. Kraft Oil's Name the Cake contest ends soon, so get your entry in right away. Remember, you may win a Ford Victoria every year for five years, or one of 1,850 Dormeyer electric appliances. <laughs> Gildersleeve has been trying to teach his nephew Leroy that a kind word is better than a harsh word. He tried to set an example for Leroy by paying Mrs. Pettibone elaborate compliments. In fact, he stretched the truth so far, it snapped back at him. Bertie, this may cost me that appointment to the school board. Yes, sir. Leroy, you didn't have to tell the principal the same things I told Mrs. Pettibone. Well, gosh, you shouldn't have told the principal the same things you told Mrs. Pettibone either. Well, I'll admit I went a little overboard. But I was right in principle, wasn't I, Bertie? You were right in principle, but you were also in wrong with the principal. <laughs> How about that, Bertie? He hands out the same line to everybody. Well, I only meant to do good. Ladies like to hear nice things about themselves, don't they, Bertie? Yes, sir, but if you use a good line too often, it wears out. Oh, well. You take a fishing line, use it too often, it wears out. Yeah, I know. Take a clothesline, load it down with wet wash too often, it wears out. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Miss Gilfrey, do you know why that good line of yours wore out? Yes, but I tried to use it too often. <laughs> Well, that's the last time I'm using a line. I thought it was worthwhile to make people feel good, even if it did stretch a point. Well, from now on, I'll be sincere. I may even take back some of the nice things I've said about people. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gillespie. What can I do for you today? Give me the biggest, blackest, meanest cigar you've got. You want a cigar or a smudge pot? <laughs> well, I guess I'm just in a mood, Petey. Well, I hope I didn't contribute to it. Here's the cigar. What do you mean? Well, when you were in here last, you complimented me on the food, and I, I didn't even thank you. Oh, well, forget it. Your food wasn't that good. How's that? You know the stuff you serve here is very mediocre, Peavy. That's what I say. You're not upset because I'm telling you the truth about your food? <laughs> I know. I don't know why people come in here to eat. This is a drugstore. <laughs> you see, that proves my point. You don't have to say complimentary things to people to get along with them. Peavy, do you know I may lose that appointment to the school board just because I went out of my way to flatter a couple of people? Mm, that'd be too bad if you lost that appointment. Yeah, I'll say. I've already told the mayor I was accepting the job. And all of my friends found out about it. Who from? Well, me. <laughs> <laughs> but from now on, I'm going to be sincere. I'm sticking to the truth until it hurts. I'm going to hew to a line. Never deviate. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gillespie. But isn't that Baldwin Hogan getting out of his car, that's right? Yeah, I wonder how he ever got to be head of Hogan Brothers. He's one of the brothers. <laughs> what do you have against him? Well, he's a backslapper, Peavy. I've gotten pretty suspicious of his ilk. Why, I always considered him quite an agreeable fellow. He's not sincere. Well, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, you don't have to jump on Baldwin. Well, I'm just telling the truth. 
Good morning, Mr. Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Hogan. You're looking great, Mr. Peavy. You must be taking your own vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hogan. What can I do for you? Well, uh, give me a box of cigars. He pretends he doesn't see me. Very well. What kind of cigars do you smoke? Any kind except these big black ones on the counter. <coughs> Hogan, that's what I'm smoking. Oh, is that you, Gildersleeve? <laughs> I didn't recognize you behind your smoke screen. <laughs> you saw me, Baldwin? No, 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 I, I really didn't. You know I always go out of my way to say hello, especially to our distinguished water commissioners. Hogan, flattery will get you nowhere. My, my. Gildersleeve. What's gotten into you? you know, I just don't like an insincere person. I don't understand. You go out of your way to be nice one day and ignore me the next. I did not ignore you. I guess I just didn't expect to see you here. I thought you might be in your office working for us taxpayers. I do my job, Hogan. That's reassuring. Hogan, I'll have you know I'm so well thought of in the community. I've been mentioned for the post on the school board. Well, I don't know where they'd find a bigger post for the job. <laughs> Touche. You watch it, Hogan. For your information, Gildersleeve, I was approached about that vacancy just today. So they talked to me yesterday. Second choice. Second choice. Touche right back. <laughs> Gildersleeve, I'll have you know I refuse to serve because of my many other civic duties. You did. But if it boils down to a contest between us, I'll go out and get that appointment. But, Hogan, you just said you were loaded down with important civic duties. Yes, but I just want to see the better man have the job. Not if I can help it. Back to Rochester, please! Yes, Bertie? I'm back, I was you. Yes, yes. Is that phone call this afternoon? Mrs. Pettibone? Yes, sir. She wanted to know if you was home, and I said you wouldn't be home till after five, and she said, okay, she'd be by to talk things over with you about the school board. Well, I guess she thinks coming by personally will soften the blow. Come again? She wants to let me down easy, Bertie. Tell me I didn't get the school board appointment. Yes, sir. Mr. Hogan of Hogan Brothers got it. Yes, sir. That Mr. Hogan's all about everything, ain't he? Yeah, he manages pretty well, the backslapper. But I told him off, and I guess he went right to Mrs. Pettibone. Yes, sir. Wait till I talk to her. I'll have a few firecrackers to light under him. Yes, sir. Bertie! I'm in here talking to your Uncle Leroy. Oh, hi, Uncle. Yeah, hello, my boy. Bertie, have you got enough dinner tonight for me to ask Curly Miller over? I think so. I'm going to make sure we have. Great, I'll go tell him. You Wait a minute, Leroy. What's this about asking Curly to dinner? Hey, yeah, he wants me over for Sunday dinner, so I thought I'd ask him tonight. You aren't calling each other names anymore? Sure. He calls me old buddy, and I call him old pal. Well, I'm delighted. Yeah. Your advice about speaking a good word paid off. Yeah, I'm glad. Sometimes you go overboard, but you always set the right example. Well, I... <laughs> Never mind, Bertie. I expect it's Mrs. Pettibone. Gosh, is she coming over? Yeah, talk about the school board job. Yeah? All together, Unc. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Mrs. Pettibone. Come right in. Thank you. I, uh, I trust Bertie gave you my message. Yes, I've been expecting him. You won't you sit down? Yes, and I'll come right to the point. You know, uh, this is a rather difficult subject to discuss with you. I know, Mrs. Pettibone. I realize I came to you first, but... How would you feel if Mr. Baldwin Hogan got the appointment? Well... Of course, he's extremely active in civic affairs and numerous clubs. Yes, he but is. But tell me candidly, do you think Mr. Hogan would really work for the school, or is he just a joiner? Well, Mrs. Pettibone, he... I... Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? I don't really think he joins organizations just for the publicity. Oh, I'm glad to hear you say that. But he's so busy. I wonder if he'd have as much spare time as you. Oh, not that you don't keep our water running smoothly. Well. But perhaps you have the faculty of appearing not to be busy when you're thinking all the time. <coughs> Clankety-clank, clankety-clank. Wheels turning, you know. <laughs> you, well, Miss Pettibone, I can't deny I have some spare time. 
Oh, then you think Mr. Hogan would be too busy. You know, no. Sometimes it's the busy people who can always find time for another project and do it well. Well, thank you. Oh, you were talking about Mr. Hogan, weren't you? Yes, yes. I think he'd make a very fine member of the school board. Oh, what a splendid recommendation. You must be a good friend of his. Friend? Well, yes, indeed. Good old Baldwin. Well, I, I must be running along now. Oh, thank you for your time, Mr. Gildersleeve. No, not at all, Mrs. Pettibone. You've helped me immeasurably in making up my mind. Great. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Goodbye, Mrs. Pettibone. <laughs> Unc, I couldn't help hearing that big bill up you gave Mr. Hogan. No? Yeah. But you threw your school board appointment out the window. You must feel terrible. Oh, not at all, my boy. Let's forget it. Hey, what time's your new friend Curly coming to dinner? We may have time for all three of us to go out and kick the football. You're swell, Unc. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back with us again in just 30 seconds. When you're shopping tomorrow, get a green cap bottle of Kraft Oil at your grocer's. And along with it, a free entry blank for Kraft Oil's exciting Name the Cake contest. The winner of this contest gets a new Ford Victoria every year for five years. Or you may win one of 1,850 Dormeyer electric appliances. All you do is name the luscious new cake made with Kraft Oil. Get your entry blank tomorrow. Well, school's out, but I don't see Leroy. Uh oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh oh, the principal. Hello, Miss Henshaw. I understand they chose Mr. Hogan for the school board practically on your recommendation. Well. That was very unselfish of you. Well, I'd like to have had the job. I think it's wonderful that men like you and Mr. Hogan take such an interest in our schools. Well, you teachers can't do it all. No. No, we need everybody's help and active participation if we're going to build better schools, because better schools build better communities. Well, I still expect to work for better schools. Wonderful. And I wouldn't mind doing a little work for the principal. <laughs> for instance? Well, I could show for you home. I accept. I'm a little tired. Well, maybe it would be restful to take in a movie this evening. I think it might. Why, George, I didn't get the school board job today. But tonight I've got the principal. <laughs> Good night, <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Kathy Lewis, Lillian Randolph, Margaret Brayton, Patrick McGeehan, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too, but here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced. And craft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get craft prepared mustard. <laughs> Magic 28, October 4th on NBC.